Welcome everyone. Today I'm going to talk about something quite fun, which is shapes in music. Okay. And from last week, we got all a little bit deep into that, a um, little bit Bach chorales and that four part harmony analysis. And uh, analytical systems in many ways are sort of just ways to categorize or look upon things and the many different aspects. And today I would like to talk about shapes in music. This is basically in some aspects, a, a tool for analysis. And this is both equally interesting for uh, composers as well as interpreters, because uh, when we start seeing such a shapes and gestures in music of course that is very powerful for a vivid interpretation of course anyway so what do i mean with shapes in music anyway before we're going to look at that i would like to to look uh, i also sent out this uh, pdf and on the second page you see this um two staves here it's basically like a piano you could say and I know that for guitarists, we're not used to read maybe bass clef or to read. So basically this C here is, uh, well, it will be sort of the C on um, the second string. Uh, since we're reading it in, in a regular G clef, it's not an octave below. All right. So, but what, why have I done it like this? As you see here in the bass clef, this is the C in the bass clef and it is the C on the G clef, so we get a complete um, understanding of how these clefs works and about the register, okay? Now, if you later, or if you actually want to, you can, of course, pr print this out and you can simply sort of draw things here. This is quite nice, for example, let's say so draw. circle something like that all right and we're going to now talk we're going to get into circles and other shapes and so on but what i wanted to say is that um this page is here not so much for today but as if you like this lecture and you want to experiment a little bit with that you have that sheet in the pdf all right we are going to first so i'm going to try to give this a little bit of an organization we're going to first talk about linear shapes. Okay. And um, this is a very beautiful picture of a wave here, for example, but we can, we can start here. This is maybe a little bit obvious, but we need to take this step by step. So what you see there, this is the same way of notating as you see with the sort of piano where the C here is the same in the bass okay. clef as in the G clef. So this would just be simply a uh, all right. So that's just a line, basically going up. Same thing here. This is a. For example, it's a chromatic line. Uh, so that one was a little not so steep, but here we have in some sort of chord arpeggios. Well, here it's just these are sorry. These were just fourths. Place. So you get a very steep line, let's say, here more conventional A major chord, so type of a line we could say. Here we get a type of what it. What did I do here? Hmm. Something a little random. Just showing that there are different types, obviously, of lines. Um, on this PDF. This is another another shape we can talk about, a kind of a 
let's say we call that a wave <laughs> put a little nice picture here for you to enjoy and this would in this case this would be sorry this one or so this is a wave that is now standing still for some what do we see below here well this is a wave this is very common in music of course to have the sort of waves one a little bit higher than the other so then etc this is a wave going up right okay let's go to the next one and actually just in a very brief second here we're going to quite soon move to the spectral uh, we're going to use that spectral analysis software but of course we're not looking so much at overtones we're going to just look at the shapes but what do we have here well now we're getting a little bit more carried away but this is an attempt for example to create the shape of stairs in music and then that, that would be I'm going to actually not play this because I'm going to now make use of this beautiful software on the on the left here and we're going to listen a little bit to that stairs and actually as we're now let's see how this works quite easily see that that kind of created a stair like shape there okay I can also do this we're then looking here uh, we don't need to okay now I'm going to go back to the line we're going to do this a bit thoroughly so that it all makes sense let's get back to that line as we had it here again obvious here that it truly creates a line so this is a valid way of speaking about music let's have a look at the wave also Very beautiful here. I think you can see the wave here. Let's hear a listen. Let's hear now the the wave going up. And also trace this shape here. Very much looking the same as the one I draw on top of the music. We can also talk about, um, of course, more uh, categorizations of, uh, let's hang on a second, Ken, is it possible that I think everyone needs to mute their uh, microphone for absolute full um, function here, of course, you can invent shapes such as snakes or all kinds of things you like. And we of course talk about more irregular shapes. In this case, this is just something I For example, let's follow the more irregular shape, let's say. Okay. Now, of course, our talk about this in, in, in also in interpretation a lot, of course, is uh, the concept of a high point and the concept of plateau. Okay, so these are now made very obvious here with these um, drawings here. So that I have a plateau and this is a high point. This is very common in, in Western music or in most music to have a sort of high point or a kind of type of 
plateau again what we can enjoy ourselves with uh, is the um, sorry wrong file here let's have a look at our okay this is a high point so remember the picture of the mountain There it is. Now, another high point, uh, which is the second notation in the PDF. It looks just like this. There it was, a little mini mountain there. Here, an example of a plateau. Another one. Okay, how fun wasn't that? So, this is a very audible action, and, and when we start listening a little bit with this in mind, it can be a very wonderful way to, to think about music. Kind of very liberating also from maybe what we talked about last week, which is sort of very strict uh, sort of system of analyzing the harmony you know we're talking about music in a different way what do we then have we have a few other interesting shapes i would like to show you here is one a kind of a i don't even know that's a kind of a stretched one two three uh, what is that a stretched pentagon or something and There it is. Now I just, for fun, set this in a little bit of a, um, a dominant seventh chord. And right here, this is, what is this called, anyone? Is this a rhomb or some kind of shape like that? A lovely one. Hmm, not very obvious, but I think we can kind of see it there. A kind of... A, a, Tilted triangle here, a little bit of a twist, twisted triangle here. Hmm, pretty good. Pyramid. Uh, another type of triangle. And what is this? This is no. This is the. This is the five-sided sorry i was my what's that and geometry it's not so good but here we go pretty very pretty all right uh, this is my favorite probably <laughs> oops sorry everyone i'm making you seasick my favorite is the Heart here. This is a bit more like a joke, but anyway, I set it. What did I do here? Some kind of kind of A. Oh, what is that? Let's see. Start in the A minor there. Let's see. Hmm, not bad. It does come out pretty well. Okay, let's actually. Mm hmm. Let's now go back to our fun pdf all right so this is what we were seeing before we're going to look i forgot about that actually we need to have a look of course at the uh what would be moved into now is polyphonic shapes i we could say and actually we should also look at that very very round circle let's start with that perhaps but in this pdf you just see me playing around a little bit with the idea of basic shapes circle and as you see, this is a square. All right, so let's move back to that and now have a closer look at our circle. All right, so what did I do here? Well, okay, no bad. So here it starts 
on the same notes and there's two different voices that are completely sort of mirroring each other and we're going to get to that a little bit later with the mirroring but basically that forms somehow also if you hear it you know i hear those circles actually and i don't know if anyone is tremendously fascinated by cars but here's an audi as we all know this is the sign for the audi so well how would that sound like in music sorry this these guys here got a bit shifted well, let's let's hear the audi music here it looks a little bit here we go that's more correct Does that makes sense <laughs> Hmm. When I had it in the five, it was better, I think. So maybe the Audi music would be better with six, or if I had more notes here, obviously the the form would be a little bit more um, less stair stair like. Okay. Now let's listen to what, what is the equivalent of a square of a block in the music? Well, wouldn't that be something like this? Oops, only want one. Get a little bit of a box here in a triplet. And of course, this is not considering I just to make this a little bit more approachable. I just picked some pretty generic sort of and diatonic notes, chords, it's just a C major chord, for example. Of course, this concept doesn't really apply. It could be any type of scales or any type of harmonies. So on here's a bit of a more extreme one. OK, or imagine you pile boxes after each other. For example, have the right of spring. Like dun, 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 dun. You get different size boxes, but it also sounds very square, the music. So I think this is a very valid way to actually talk about music. Okay. Since we have that spectrometer here on our other side, uh, we're going to take this opportunity to... Now you remember we had a few different shapes here, like we had the circle, we had this... There's also kind of Audi circle here, but in fives. And here we had a heart, for example. Okay, and we also had a pyramid-like things. Okay, it's been just kind of shifted a little bit. Sorry about that. All right, but let's see if we can actually like listen to this at the same time. Let's see if we now hear these shapes or not, or am I just imagining this? Here we go. Actually, let's see the tempo. Well, that's slower, I think. I think if we go slower, we will hear it better. What do you think? This is the heart. Squares. Pyramids. Triangle.
All right, that was quite some interesting music there, but it wasn't really music. It was more a series of examples that I wanted you to sort of view in these two different windows, okay? Now, uh, let's go back to this for a second. Yeah, this was our Audi car. Now, hmm, to go in a little bit more. Of course, as you become obvious when we're repeating things, we're basically not only talking about shapes, we're also talking about things like patterns. So this over, over right. And we're just going to have a little bit of a look of a Chris, which is a zigzag pattern, okay? And I have two different kinds here. The first one here is where the lines sort of cross over each other. In this case, for convenience, for guitarists to understand this very easily, uh, these are just open strings and two different guitars and one is doing that one is doing the same only they're starting all right so this type of zigzag pattern is also uh, um, a mirror basically all right of itself now, when they're crossing over like this, the phenomena of what we actually hear, we're not hearing da -da 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 what we hear is the high note. So if we chunk it together like we hear, see here, again with this uh, type of piano notation where it's bass clef and uh, treble clef coexists here we see what you will hear is basically e b g g so you will hear e b g g b e b g g b e okay but of course if you are hearing this with two guitars there will be a certain amount of feeling that the melody is actually going in stereo <clears throat> but we're not going to actually perceive that we can can test our ears here by um, again uh, just listening to it and if I can find it here it's the crisscross pattern whoops okay hear that Okay, so I think that's quite obvious how we um do 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 we do not perce we perceive the top line as the melody, so then the effect is you having this melody cross over between two different guitars or two different whatever that is. Now we have another crisscross pattern which is not or this, I don't know if that's even called a crisscross pattern. This is just a mirror here. We're actually, what you see here is, oops, the A here is the meeting point oh, okay, of the crisscross there. And in this case, of course, because they don't overlap and register, we definitely hear this top line uh no actually we have the um, yeah then we constantly hear the top line of course we do not have that same effect but okay beautiful looks here right oops this guy is like a guitarist can just keeps playing Okay. Now we need to a little bit briefly mention the um, the uh, oops, not the end yet. Sorry, guys. The okay. So this is where we now just did here with the crisscrossing. Okay, pretty easy to understand, I think. 
Oh, uh, yo, yo. I love such a, this thing when you watch that sort of image like there's like a mirror in the in the water in the clear water and you can see the world. Um, this is, of course, also something we can create in music. All right. Um, what is, of course, interesting is also, as you can see here, this side here is slightly longer than this one, right? So the actual mirror reflection is not an exact, exact in proportion here. So to some degree, I thought that was fun to play with that idea. So on the top here, the scale moves constantly in steps. But in the lower part here, the intervals gets a little bigger as we go along. So in that sense, of course, you can just create an exact mirroring. But I just want to give an example how you also don't have to be really strict with that. And you can use different scales and so on. Uh, so, so in this way, it is what happens is basically in the scale, as you go lower down, you see, here we go from uh, I don't even know what that is. That is a um, G flat. Is that what I meant? No, no, sorry. This is guitar. Sorry. <laughs> this is just an E, E flat. Sorry. Okay. But we're going to listen to that too. But I'm not going to play it. I'm going to have this beautiful uh, machine play us all the music we need to hear. Yes, here we are with guitars. Okay. That's what we were just looking at here. Let's hear that. It's repeating now so that you can look at it again, maybe on the other side. Oops. Another one. Let's hear that one more time. And so it repeats, be aware of that. another example of a crisscross pattern just to put not with open string with some more interesting notes same thing here what we're actually hearing is dum dim dum 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 dim bum bum goes over that's what we're actually hearing let's hear that again Just, I just have a few other examples, just for fun, we can also hear these. Again, here's an example of that same idea with, with the scale being lower, bigger distances in the bottom and closer in the top. Not another one. No, that was the one we heard with open strings. Okay. Fabulous. So now go back to this. So there was a little bit of an introduction of thinking about shapes in music. And um, although this is, of course, uh, one, one can go much deeper into every example and, and, and look at many different things. We're going to do that in a second, a little bit. Look also uh, at shapes that we might know in other pieces. Okay. But I also want to mention, of course, that in a sense, we can also think of shapes in form. All right. So, in a way, if I have. me 
that is also in a sense something that repeat to me very often can also represent a cycle a circle in form for anyone this is just an example in in india it, that tal is ectal where you have one you have like basically a a b a a a b a in if somebody wants to understand this this you can find in other musics too i just thought that was a fun reference if somebody wants to know exactly what ectal is you click on that link there in the pdf then so you have da, din, din, and then Da, dun, 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 da, 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 da. Okay. okay. Uh, some of you know my composition. So then you have A, A, B, A, and then again. So the result is sort of like A, A, B, A, 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 B. A. Okay, so then what we then get to see here is that. That's what I was trying to explain. course if we're used to recording this is often how we see also the way dynamics will look like in a recording chart okay so shapes of course naturally can is also very much related to dynamics also okay that should not be unsaid a little bit of it i wanted just to show you this a little bit for for fun to see how the fibonacci series can actually work as a tall, okay?
right, that was also an excellent sort of uh, example of rhythmical variation. I thought that was worth. Thank you for sitting down. And I don't know if you could kind of try to follow that. That link is also in that PDF if you are interested in looking at it again. All right, let's now. Here, now we're almost at the end here. Well, uh, as I mentioned on that second page in the PDF, you have one of those papers there that you can print out. And if you have a, a, such a, let's see if I have it here. No, but for example, if you put this paper on the window, and then you can start drawing the shapes of wherever you are. So you can already imagine how different in some ways the music would sound if you were sort of in a in a New York City or something, you're drawing the skyline, or if you're in the mountains, or if you're somebody very flat, that would then create different kinds of music. And well, this image here for the end screen is quite pretty. And here we have, of course, a lot of polyphony, you could say. And somehow I, I think this looks a little bit like those Bach chorale sound a little bit to me. I like to do that. Well, thank you so much for paying attention to this lecture. Anyone has any kind of thoughts on this? Any questions? So I think we can go on with. You can also take these, if, if, you, if you think of chorales, you can also uh, invert them, for instance, take such a picture, like in the end, invert it, and all these, uh, how is it called, crepes in German, crap, no. <laughs> and then have all, and have all these form uh, changes that music can take, but in an abstract way. Awesome. Well, I think that, yes, I forgot something. Yes, I promised you I was going to talk about some, uh, we can actually maybe to make this more clear, we can also take a wonderful example. Uh, give me a second to pull that out the full screen here. Okay, well, here we go. For some. Oh. What happened there? I think it is. Also, if you look at the music, you can see it's called the cat cathedral, you know, so these are like the different domes within the, they look just like that, you know, right? It's not a coincidence in that respect, I think, all right? With a high point so that's pretty much exactly like one of those examples i had um, when you do get um mm -mm. get kind of a very sense of this kind of straightness as soon as you have a kind of a chord on the beat of course would that get also a more sense of a box rather than when you have something like
basically by doing such arpeggiations, it sort of softens also to our ears, not just now when we're looking at it visually, rather than if I did. Sort of the same music, but here without an arpeggio, obviously see a much more sense of music having a square shape, right? Um, and I, what I, perhaps more than um, anything with is wanted to encourage is to look at music in this way is very useful, as I said, for interpretation, but especially for composers. This is sometimes we, we can get stuck in thinking about harmonies or this and that, but forgetting, you know, what's the shape of it? You know, the same music, the same harmonies, can, we can give it so many shapes with the very same things. With the same melody, you can, because of the accompaniment, you can give it shape. You know, are you putting the bass note always with the one or are you sometimes not putting the bass note? Are you allowing a more sh so shapes to occur? Uh, what often uh, happens a little bit um, with, with when we write for the guitar, maybe we get a little bit obsessed that everything always needs to be so full and it always needs to have all the notes and the bass and so on. But what you then end up with is a, is a kind of a shapeless, a little bit music, all right? As when we allow to not have the bass, then... Now we have created a way more interesting shape. Of course, again, I, I'm very tempted just that we're going to look once more at this beautiful spectrogram rather than if I would do it. this has of course another quality too that was more of like a plateauic essence. But as you can see, if I'm always in the full register, you know, then if, so if I go so drastically changes as I am disposing register. pyramids again for example I would encourage you if you if you do like this for example now we also do uh, no I was now using another software called signal spy we also have that one that Ian recommended um, so there's two things if one wants to kind of dwell a little bit more on that one is to print out the paper and actually just have a little bit fun we're just drawing shape and filling out the notes, sort of what I did in the sample. And the other is to actually look how these shapes look like in the spectral analysis, okay? So that's 
what I will recommend. And of course, if we come to the, we talked about also more dynamics, such a thing, of course, um, these also give a certain sense of that always as the louder it gives a, a brighter color usually. So that also gives us a pretty good, good sense of that. And with this, what I really want to encourage is this to, you know, to be innovative with using shapes, be innovative with using accompaniments, be innovative with what other voices are doing, you know? How are they correlating and how do they create shapes together? Okay. Awesome. Well, I think we can turn this. Oh, we can leave it on. Uh, okay, so we have some wonderful um, things to look at today, which is awesome. Um, do you want to start maybe, Anand, do you want to start here? With um, your... Yeah, sure, sure. You are the one that picked up on my harmonic challenge. Yeah. Um... Actually see what happens. I was very yes. tempted to use normal notes, but then I was like, no, let's just stick to the challenge. Do you want to demonstrate it for us a little bit? Or I'm just, sure. No, I'm I'm... This. Oh, but you have a heart. That's quite useful now to have a tab because yeah, I, of this yeah. severe retuning. Yeah, because, uh, well, yeah, that there are two, uh, two strings uh, a step above. Um, and I, I also think with with uh, pure harmonics, tabs help better. Let me try it. G four D. Bravo. See, it sounds good, even though I play half of the notes wrong. It sounds very nice. Nice stuff. Yeah. yeah it, I, it was it, it was fun, um, but I, I had I had to improvise a lot, figure out what sounds good. Um, it, it's limiting, but it's also freeing in a way that uh, you're forced to uh, figure out uh, ways that would make it interesting. So in this case, you're you saying uh... <clears throat> I mean, another way to understand this is to simply also just, in this case, you have limited yourself to the natural harmonics that occur with this particular tuning. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And you're using the harmonics on the 12th fret and using the ones on the 7th and the 5th. And some of these are the same notes, but Basically, you, what you get is, if we do this systematically, your lowest note is, in this case, the F, right? 
that's your lowest one that, that you're allowing yourself to use here the second lowest would be fifth string here so you have a sort of a scale but with some gaps inside that's where you what you get right so yeah i i basically kind of stuck the a minor pentatonic i think mm -hmm. yes you get also oh, you get another pen yeah, I think. And you? Yes, that is. Uh, and we're using um, the, of course, then basically that's it. And then you have to write music with those, that scale, let's say, whatever that is. So, uh, so in a way, one way is just to improvise. We talked about last time too. That's very important. Another way is you can also just, now you know which notes you have. So you can just yeah. write stuff only with those notes, even just by pen and paper, just for just imagining, we talked also about today about shapes, this kind of, you can just, you know, compose with the scale a little bit, you know, whimsically, and try it out. That's sort of another approach. Now, of course, you can always also move into uh, harmonics, like on the four string, you get this, but then you, that will be, this was in a different tuning, so. Yeah. But of course, it can have, a, for example, tremendous effect if you were to make yeah. this a longer piece, but at some point yeah. also use some off, in this case, even off mode, off, off tune, harmonic, yeah. just sort of like. <laughs> then it sounds something like, I don't know, some weird gamelan music or something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. I mean, all of this, they're very beautiful. Of course, they could, you could also have ad lib re repeated more. Mm -hmm. Oh, you said, sorry, you already wrote four times here. So you already did that. Awesome. Beautiful. Thank you for doing that. That's, I think that's very cool. Do you want to just leave it like this or you're... Uh, I, I you plan on continuing with it. Uh, uh, it's quite enjoyable actually to just have some restrictions such as this. Yeah, I mean, you could also allow yourself to introduce other notes that are not harmonics and then you would have mm. playing with a texture you know yeah that yeah. it's also very nice uh i um, i quite like that idea of, of being in harmonics and then gradually make your way into a lower landscape also because obviously at this point with harmonics you're limited to this f being your lowest note Cancelled very quickly. There it is. There it is fully. So, unless you at some point give up on the harmonics, you're not going to be able to go any lower than that note. Yeah. So, that's another. We talked about narratives last time, but a narrative can also be that we start in harmonics, high harmonics, and we end, and in between there, you know, there can be some sort of dance yeah. or we can st stick with only harmonics but for for that uh, sort of um challenge i propose this is very you already did and so what i said one page awesome it's beautiful you know and it's always so nice in in pieces and now to, to have har sections we can try with only harmonics of course yeah. then you can achieve any note by using uh, artificial harmonics combined with That's also an, a, another approach. But again, the natural harmonics are, of course, the most powerful ones. And especially if you want some section in the piece to just have this kind of so if, if effective sometimes to just write a section in a piece, which is just entirely harmonics, you know, that is like yeah. becomes like we're composed now for harmonics, particularly like almost like orchestration, you know, like. Now it's for flute rather than uh, you know, trumpet. Super, thank you so much. Thank you. Beautiful, I'm enjoying that. 
I'm doing that. Let's um so Franz, last time we didn't get a chance to actually properly look at your pieces. Is that still accurate now or have you sort of re continued a lot since what you sent last time? No, I simply left it as it is because then, then I wanted on, to yeah. to maintain the open character. And it's for me also something interesting because I did not compose it just now. I composed it 20 years ago and it is part oh. of my old notices. And this is what I think sometimes is the best thing for me to do, to take my old notes. So now this piece is called Dream Stages. And this, tell us about that. This is arbitrary. I thought, what is the character of the piece? I first thought it's kind of elephant heart beating. <laughs> Something <laughs> like that. Oh, but those, yeah, the seas there, I see. There, it's like, it's like... Uh, yes. and, uh, but then it, then it came to me, it is like, it, it, can, it can develop in many kinds of temperaments and dream stages can be very deep. They can be, for instance, um, uh, are, how it's called, REM sleep is a little bit unrest, there's there some mm -hmm. unrest, a bit, little bit quicker. So you can go into very, very deep stages where you are almost dead in a way until very, very right, lively. Right, yeah. Uh, and oh, I see. Lively, yeah, yeah. Very lively stages. Mm -hmm. So I, I dealt a little bit with this because I'm a neurobiologist, as you know. Mm -hmm. And then it came to me that I can even rewrite the idea and say it's Einstein's dreams. And this means it's mm -hmm. uh, about Einstein. There is, it's very well known. Uh, the creative process of Einstein when it came to how de how he developed the relativity theory with the idea mm. that the, that the velocity the the, the 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 core idea is that the velocity of the light is uh, can is one all over the cosmos mm. and so and then you can then then you have it and but before that he had very, very strange ideas. For instance, how is it if I follow uh, a piece of light and try to overcome it in velocity and some very strange stuff, very unrest and this and that and that and that. And I thought it might be interesting to go to these creative processes and to take them as an inspiration for different moods in that piece. Wow, thank you. That was... It should be a little bit longer. Well, the, your explanation of it was at this point way longer than the piece. So that could be yes. an issue. <laughs> thank you. But uh, so, so do I understand you right? This is some, some music that you composed some time back, but you have almost sort of forgotten it. And now you're sort of looking yes. at it again. Yes. And the idea of dream stages, was this already part of the original title? Or no, something, is there it, was no You're bringing title. in now. So this has come from France now. It's, it's putting yes. this title. Interesting. Yes, yeah. yes. I think I, I thought, how can I name it? Mm. I should name mm. it somehow. No, and I think that's so always so powerful. Also, I always have a lot of different working titles. And in this case, maybe uh, you're better. I mean, this already is a perfect title, of course. <laughs> this is a oh, great this is title. a guiding idea. Already, we want end. to hear the piece. Yeah, yeah and it can guide you because it, if it, you're trying to explain to yourself what you're trying to express somehow. Yeah, yeah. It's right? a, it's a, it's an answer to the question: What can I make with it? This is mm. one idea. This is mm -hmm. one idea. Uh, but uh, in a way, I'm a bit stuck with it. Well, no problem. But so, so this is so we're going also we're going from this is some music some time back. So time is involved. So this is all very interesting. And uh, of course, in a dream, we can all of a sudden be ten years ago in that dream, right? Or we can yeah, be yeah, another yeah. time. So this is yeah, yeah. also interesting that you have this yeah. material from another time 
Uh, fascinating. My first piece was the same thing as I as I told you as I, as I wrote in the explanation. Mm -hmm. It was old stuff which I took out and said and saw. Oh, it's not too bad. And you said my first piece was the best. And so maybe I th <laughs> yes, the ideas, of moving uh, forward, you need to start which, moving. No, <laughs> no. Maybe, maybe oh. all this stuff which is absolutely naive is what is my style in the end or what well let's see let's see let me i think my so i think i can give this a try here it doesn't seem to i just have to look out for the, the flats here but shall i shall i have a uh, shall i have a oh. try oh you want yeah sure i was going about to play it but if you if you have it in practice it's better you oh, play it not so much but uh, give me an idea <laughs> Quite a da, da, da. It's a bit like a sneaky smile almost here. It's a little bit cheeky. It's quite a. I like that that tonality change there. Very nice. It's this. I think that here you obviously this is a one, two, three, four bar kind of phrase here. We talked about shapes before. Well, here's a kind of da di da di da di right da da kind of a bit of a zigzag, and that continues here. But this time um, the bass is a little different, and then you land, of course. On the same chord again, all right? No, not, of course, a problem in any way, but to me, it is a little bit this music as you're starting off, there is definitely a sense of a powerful sense of anything thing can happen. Of what? Anything oh, can happen. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sort of like, what is this? Is, a, is this a volcano? Is it, is it going to erupt or is it going to implode or is it going to explode? We don't know. <laughs> but of course, by the time, uh, also, I feel when you repeat this chord, for example, in a sense, we're getting less and less of that sense that we don't know what is going to happen. And uh, hearing your story about the dream station, this, in the dream, I think we're more opposed to this state of not knowing. Like I said, anything can happen. And that's the fantastic thing about a dream that it doesn't follow the laws of, uh, of you know, gravity, for example, you can fly in your dream and such a thing. So I, to, to, to some degree, I would, I, I would encourage to go more in that direction. So a very simple thing, for example, is it possible to just yet do something to that chords? Is it possible to, for example, 
make it even more cheeky second time where is it for example i added an f right just at, to keep that i would encourage you to stay more in that unpredictable state and when here this is we talked about earlier this is exactly my example it's a line it's a very straight line but again a line is incredibly predictable so again maybe it could be more cheeky for example just not completely straight maybe a little one going up some kind of irregularity that will make us stay now more in that mood of not knowing what to do when you reach this chord again very successful again a, a chord and we have that uh, a dissonance that again we're right right back into that unpredictability and this is uh, and maybe in my sense you could maybe it could also be played rubato of course but you could also maybe spice up the rhythm a little bit like syncopation or a little irregularity again that's what and of course here we're you're really going into a more this is a little bit of a more square type of movement it's fine this is a different type of movement and and and, and kind of another <laughs> you want to be and maybe this time yet yet more far distant yet more let's say disturbed you could have yet some more coloring on that c chord in my opinion and, and from there now you're dealing with a kind of music in my opinion which is unpredictable so actually you could patch these different thematic things in quite easily into different you know uh, strips and little bits um as as you would wish for yes definitely all of this you have now i would say this is one kind of thematic material which is that type of um try well crisscross mm -hmm. and then you have this other one which is a more linear and then you have this thing here which is yet a kind of another motif almost especially since if, especially if you keep it in this rhythm especially if you give it some other more uh, definition rhythmically it becomes a very strong motif this is another line but very st steep one <gasps> almost makes us dizzy a little bit like, whoa, like looking down from the eiffel tower fantastic so that all introduces new elements uh, it's all very powerful and and then you have this one which is more dum dum doom so these are sort of like different moods and what i understand you what you're trying to achieve is now the sense of dream which means that you can for example use now these different moods which you have created and actually jump between them in an almost to some degree almost random way does that make sense? Because the dream is that sort of, oh, well, now we're here. Now we were, now we're here. So all of this can be patched together and easily, for example, exaggerated another time. This one, for example, how about one time is the, let's keep the, the zigzag idea, but let's make it even more steep. Maybe you go. idea but i widened your shape of that so, so so very easily you can create all kinds of very interesting mm -hmm. music out of these elements and 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 the mm -hmm. dream then just like a dream too we don't know the don't dreams typically don't have a really clear beginning and an end right so this you can also achieve by basically having little strips of different things happening this is a thought. I don't know what, what you're feeling about that, but I, I think yes. it's very strong. There's a lot of strong material. Yes, here. I have I have thought I leave it as it is to honor my 
20 years old uh, stuff, but then do exactly what you say. Take all the stuff and mm -hmm. make kind of dreamy stuff of it. Mm -hmm. For instance, starting with a non-resolved, uh, no, here you start in a way with a tonic, mm -hmm. and uh, for instance, Beethoven very often starts with a, with a subdominant and some stuff. Mm -hmm. So there's a, some, fina fin it's not stating the tonality and so on. It's, it's going somewhere and you don't know exactly. Yes. And, mm -hmm. or, and what you say uh, random elements to uh, to take these different moods but sh not not all together but i wanted to really separate mm -hmm. a little bit uh, mm -hmm. yeah. kinds of mood for instance unrestlessness or uh, driving towards a solution or thinking mm -hmm. of a certain thing or so and i think you you can you can do a lot with that uh, as you say and yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, 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 absolutely. Sense. Yeah, I'm glad that you like that idea. So w what I then also would look at is, for example, some other what is not to make a more of a longer piece, what we don't really have right now is some more significant rhythmical elements. So that I would look into, mm -hmm. uh, you know, because now it's all quite straight. I mean, you could take this thing here and has different rhythms like that was just a different type of rhythm or as i said this one could have there could also be rhythmical element rather than just melodical and the mm -hmm. other thing i would like to say is yes here's kind of like a c and then here's sort of like you're on the <laughs> subdominant f but and here but this like you're already doing here here's b i like that i think you don't have to at all think you can just be here and then it can be here just like a dream you don't you know mm -hmm. you can be in new york and the next moment of your dream you're in africa mm -hmm. so in the same sense here you don't even yeah. don't feel too much bound to to stick with some functions or or typical it could literally just be transposed mm -hmm. in any yeah. tonal center but, because that's the nature of a dream a little bit too but but dreams are not as bizarre as people think there are analyzes of dream contents and they are very often uh, the most dreams even if people say they are very very bizarre there are, mm. there are only very few elements which are bizarre but these are then very significant mm, yeah exactly well i, I guess another fun uh, if you were say just wanted to mention that if you were say a little stuck especially talking about something like a narrative of course we all have some like you say bizarre or strange dreams perhaps that we remember and then you could just simply use a dream that you remember and use that for the narrative for example if you're sort of stuck with finding a abstract narrative then you can use I think this kind of stories too. We shouldn't be. Sometimes we can even. It's not always bad even to be a little bit childish about just using a little bit like story time within, especially when it comes to form. Because we're talking about the the narrative. Fantastic, friends. Well, I look forward to see how this develop. I, it, there's a lot of powerful stuff. It's it's like lava music. It's like it's hot and small, and it can turn into any shape. That's how what I would call it. Lava music. Thank you so much. Very oh, inspiring. Oh, I'm glad. Thank you for for your work. Well, Kenny, we also have you've been working real hard, and I wasn't there a few weeks ago. Where I think you guys already talked about this piece. Um, so maybe everyone else knows, but I just want to understand the title a little bit better. Your composition is called. Um, Tell me, I have it. Hop. Are you there? I'm here. Uh, hop, skip, jump. What, tell us about the tie. I'm hop, skip, jump. Is it a play with uh, some musical idea? Because I do see some. Uh, hop, skip, and of... jump. It's, it's sort of like maybe it's just an American phrase. Oh, it's, it's the one of those. Oh, I see. Sorry. Yeah. So Educate it's just us like, on Americans. Yeah, I mean, you know, a hop on your feet, a skip, you go like this, and a jump, you go like that. So this is what kids do in a playground. Hop, skip, jump. Oh, I see. Oh, oh that makes sense. So this is playground music. Oh, 
Oh, that looks that is uh, lovely. No, I, I see that now. So uh, you sent me over here a, um, uh, if you don't mind, we can listen to that, the, a little audio which you extracted from your software, I believe. Yeah, at MP3, I've learned to do that. It seems to work okay. This was- Yeah, I mean, this is, as oh. we, I used it earlier today for the shapes. There are many very, very awesome things about it. So I think, but we can maybe, as we're going to listen to this, we should probably conscious here that you're using a lot of harmonics. So we need to use our imagination a little bit when we're listening to that file. And for example, here you use this quite, uh, You know, a very guitaristic effect that we're obviously not going to hear. And, also, hear and later in, what happens is I use a lot of. I'm working on raschiatos and a lot of right. You know, strumming and raschiatos. So this is really just kind of gets the order of things more than anything. Mm. But let's hear. You know, it I've anyway, continued yeah. working on it since I sent it to you, so it's still oh, okay. evolving. All right, but we're not going to look in too much detail. Okay, let's hear this now. And see. We're just listening, I'm lost, sorry. <laughs>
so sorry for getting lost there. What was, was there something different, or did I just? I think I was. There may be a page missing. Maybe page. Oh missing. yeah. No, I don't know. Oh, maybe I got carried away there a little bit. But lovely stuff. I. Oh wow! Look, listen to that. This is my um, relaxation music. Very fun. It almost sounds a little bit also like it could be a fugue theme, right? Right? It almost looks a little like a fugue theme. Well, that first part is all just harmonic, so it's yeah. a, it's an introduction. That's all. It's no, but no, it is you, quite fun. It's it a could, summary. It's a summary. It's well, it could be. A, oh, sorry. What I said, it could also. I don't know, this one or another. You're talking about a playground. I also find that, I mean, Fugue is a kind of a game, isn't it? Right? So it's yeah. more of an adult game. It's more like chess rather than skipping and jumping. Yeah. But of course, this theme, I mean, just hypo, just talking about it in general. Would make a very good Fugue theme, right? Well, it does. It goes all the way. I'm starting another one. Yeah, major to in measure 25, it does just that. And you know, go to 25. Yeah. Oh, but that's another. Oh, dear. Oh, there, yeah, 25. There it goes. So it's kind of doing that. All right. So I think that it's very cool. I would. As if I'm playing this, I'm just as a player, perhaps more. I'm wondering: Do we need to replug the chord, full chord each time, or is it sometimes sufficient that it just rings over? the shapes too that in a way could be more smoother sometimes ringing it's very if i played it i would feel a little bit like hmm do i need to, or could for example some just be tied then because it's already sounding you know it's sounding anyway sometimes we don't always have to replug everything because we, we have sustain and and to some degree well, this is like here, for example, you don't. Yeah. Much. Yeah, this is the dilemma in trying to write uh, strumming chords. Like strummed chords. Well, that's of course another issue. Oh, it really is. Oh, so, I see. Well, yeah. The, so it's basically write the notes that should be there and use strum sign for up and down. That's usually that's what I do. You That's write, even if it's some tricky thing where you're only strumming certain notes, try to be kind of as precise as possible. Yeah. And if people's echo, I mean, strumming is a little bit like sometimes we over strum on some other strings and that's okay somehow. Um, I love this. We talked about shapes today a lot. I think here is a great example. You have a whole long se section here. Uh, here is lovely. Here you're creating a lot of wonderful shapes. It's exactly kind of what talking about today right for the single line very very nice shapes there yeah and i'm also doing those lines pizzicato now too hmm. so they take on a, a more contrasting character mm -hmm. yeah pizzicato is interesting uh, since we do have our signal spy here if i play or if i play pizzicato quite significant what we notice in the pizzicato we get way less of the overtones so pizzicato creates a very kind of boom numb and type of right Again, it's an excellent way, pizzicato, this is what color does. It, 
allows us to create sections, colors, dimensions. Um, I don't know, I think that is awesome. And um, let's go back to this color here. Well, so, so basically you've been working hard here. So this is basically finished. Sounds great. Well, it's getting there. The way that I did it, and this seems to be my pattern now, is that I wrote it all out on pencil mm -hmm. first. And that's what I did, just kind of getting ready for Stephen's class, even though I just was kind of hurrying. Then I sat back and entered it into staff pad mm -hmm. so that I can print it and spread it out on the table and look at the whole thing. And when you said you wrote this by pencil, was, this, was, it, was it like from A to Z or was it like, did you change the order of the sections or how did you compose that? This? Not at first, I just right off the pencil. So from then beginning I to end. Yes, yeah, so I took it from beginning to end, start getting a look at it, and then just start going through it. But now I'm back to pencil again. And even scissors and paper to cut yeah, it. This is interesting because what I, what I think at this point, you're at a stage where you basically wrote, you wrote the piece, it's there, but you're like, you haven't put it out there. So this is sort of a last kind of review. I would, of course, I'm always i always have second doubts and i always think about form a lot this is a kind of piece where you have these different themes overlapping and there could be so, so many different ways for example which one you don't have to start with this theme it could start with this theme is there just i mean it could even start with this theme there, this could have many variable playouts right there's all like very pretty pieces so and they go well with each other so actually many different orders could work i, I have a feeling many orders could oh, work I, quite I, well <laughs> yeah, because it's, they, they fit they fit into each other it seems constantly and you're doing that so of course that is now kind of this sort of uh, endless amounts of different versions there could be i'd like to I always at least try to, even if you may just end up doing this, but I, at least in your mind, at least try it um, on, on the computer. It's quite easy to do it because you can just shift around the sections and sort of listen back to it and say, hmm, what was this like? And what if I started with this? What if it's, you know, you know, I guess there's also some, some parts where you could repeat or loop or, right? <laughs> I mean, there's not... It could also go on for 10 minutes or or so this is a hard kind of uh, choice to make and coming back to the idea of course what can be you can also there's talk about the narrative so you can also for example also for now what i find very useful sometimes is basically just take another piece of paper with your pen and just okay let's say this is a so here we have a you don't even have to be, you can just really give them names like A, B, and then it's, let's say this is A. Why is this not working? Let me see. Okay. Oh, so we know this is A. All right. And what do we have here? Is this B? Right? Something like that. B. Is this a D, maybe? Identify them. And then you have some other section and maybe write that on a list what you did now separately and then see what is the current narrative and i think from there you can think what are the other possible what are the very few possible other uh, forms that i could do i think that's always a good kind of thing to do um before you just totally decide just in case I think of it to myself a bit like just in case that I missed something you know it could just be that, that there is it would be better again I mean now you're of course so then currently you give us a ding bop, bam, you start with harmonics too it's a very bright it's a very playful 
a beginning of the piece, if this piece would, for example, have started, um, we talked about these shapes here. Let's say that. Maybe say that this was the beginning. be so different that that is a much more dramatic uh, section right it would almost like completely change although it's the same piece it's quite interesting how how changing the order can create you know you could create like several you could up can let's say we have several narratives you could for example start off dramatic and then go towards the light or it could go like this now it's kind of development everything is possible and and um, <laughs> there's actually a lot of good starts. So do you? quite striking theme that could be also if uh, you wish that could easily we talked about the extension such a thing could very easily that is one thought but then of course then it could also become more of a dramatic piece so but i mean Honestly, it's very nice. So you, this maybe this is the perfect form. If you want to just, all I can really say is that my advice would be at this point, do look over, you know, the way you distribute it. Now, now I mean, now you kind of nailed out the details, but it's a good time to sort of sit back and a little bit like what, look at what you created, but from a distance. And that's of course, what happens when we really look at form we need to in order to feel the form we need to sort of distanciate ourselves a little bit to it when we need to sort of experience it as a flow all right well, what's great about having the playback option mm -hmm. that's what and actually really if you don't think it sounds good what you can do with the play for example if you have a you can take if you have a speaker or if you listen on your ipad can maybe also go in the bathroom, for example, with more resonance. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm not joking. And then, for example, if you take a shower or something, if you put it there, then you're not, then you have to, because you don't hear so clearly. Now you're listening much more with your imagination too. So for example, if you like have it on, then you can really like also physically, sometimes if you put loud, you put it in the other room. And then you listen from the other room. This is very effective because now it sounds much more like a real guitar. It's like somebody said, guitar always sounds better in the room next <laughs> next to us. <laughs> you know, all well, the scratching and all the squeaks, everything goes away. You just hear sort of pure music from the other room. So that I do that a lot, like putting using in that sense, uh, even if it's because for the form, it's so very useful to do that. Also, sometimes I do it if I record just on my phone, even if I play a lot of mistakes or whatever, or I, something's not complete. Again, you can then listen back, but like put the phone a little, put it in the bathroom and listen from the other door and say, oh, that sounds really nice. No, but then you get that distance and you can hear the music, you know, like and paying in attention. I mean, something like a narrative of a music, it's not like somebody goes to a concert and they're like, oh, I figured it out. It's more like that is the subconscious working, but the composer have to be taking care of that. That's how you're like guide, you know, what is the, what are you presenting to this person? Listen, it's not that they're like keeping score or anything in track of you. You are the opposite. So that's why we need to take that. It's, it's a different kind of listening. It's, it's a, what's happening in the whole form, you know? And it's very often, especially with, the, if you want to understand other works or as an interpreter very often i feel i do need to to really understand the form of a piece i need to hear it several times to be honest 
because it is something you have to go through so the full so that is it's from a poster to some degree we have to sort of imagine what it's going to be like to go through this form of course that with a good inner ear what you can also do especially after having used the software you can also then try this takes a lot of concentration and and using the inner ear sometimes can also be a bit deceiving about the form all right for example also looking at the score if something is very fast it can look like it's going to last very long but because it's so fast it only goes by in a, in a click and you have like last week with the Bach this is one page of that but it's so slow that it goes on for a long time so Okay, okay, and always useful. I find it useful to write out like sort of form plans in a linear sense. I know that composers that sometimes they want to write symphonies, then they have, they're putting this one paper of the other on the wall, and they see the whole form like that over the whole wall. I've seen a lot of composers use such a big. Right, this camera was very very powerful. So you have kind of the the current. Uh, form you're thinking and you can even have different papers or if you have a big house yeah. Can you, can, yeah and you could paste it on the wall but you could maybe also make some marks or something and then you can try the different orders ideally then one page should be by section in that case or you can just use some kind of drawing way of making this sort of uh, formal uh, you, you can see it in some way so this is, i find very powerful this is one of the things that's missing from the computer printing is that I can never see it spread out like that. You can see little bits of it, but you can't. Yeah, but usually what, what it's more effective for that is to replace it with sheet. You can literally make uh, drawings, okay? Uh, or, or if you do that, you know, you could literally like uh, uh, write out, if I can grab a paper here. There's so many ways to do it. I like to do it a little bit like, um, so you maybe put like A, okay, here's A, and that music is a little bit, it's a bit like this. It goes a little bit like this, and then it, end, it ends on a kind of chord. And then that's a B section, which is kind of all chunks of chords like this. Then I have a C section, which is, Maybe it's a rhythmical motif. Dum dim, dum dim, bum bum. And then that's for C here. Then I put in that motif. All right. So then, or, or you can use this as a little. So then you, you get a, a kind of a. Top, now you're really starting to have a very nice overview of the full piece because you're dealing here now with already, what is it, five pages? So. To be able to see that in a single kind of strip, it's quite powerful. Um, it can also be useful in, in the process, for example, of adding dynamics and such. And you can plan out a little bit the dynamics in a very clear way. So that, that can be quite... Uh, it's common practice. As a lot of composers do this. I know that. It's very useful. Um, I don't know exactly know how Steve does it. We can perhaps ask him another time. Um, so that I can, in general, for everyone, one can, one can recommend such a thing, right? Or, or this could be, A could be one paper, as I said, when you look at it. And it fun, fun things to do. Well, everyone, this has been super nice. Uh, thank you so much once more and thank you for um, patience and going through helping let's see i'm going to stop the recording now